Hey guys and welcome to episode 8 of reading South African celebrity birth charts without any pre-context. So in today's episode we're going to read none other than X60 Legacy's um, chart and see what's going on in her life. Let's go. According to sources, which is basically her because I know her like that, X60 was born on the 8th of August 1999 around 20 past 7 making her a Leo Sun Cancer Moon with a Pisces Rising. Now, the first major aspect that I saw in her chart is her grand fixed cross. So, fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, right? Fixed signs are the persistent, consistent, stable, don't like to change, don't like to change their ideals and beliefs because they, once they fixate themselves on something, they just stay in that stable place, right? So, she has a Taurus Saturn, she has a Leo Sun, she has a Scorpio Mars, and her Uranus is in um, Aquarius. So it's safe to say that she is very, 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 very stubborn, okay, and rightfully so, because she has all the fixed signs. I mean, what are you going to (laughs) do? So let's start with this aspect, her Sun squaring her Mars. And if you look at the degrees, it's a very tight square because they're both 15 degrees. Now, like I said with the Pearl Susi video, if you go watch that one, women who have their sun squaring Mars are very, very domineering women, right? And as I said also before, the sun, Mars, and Saturn, those are the planets that we will look to to indicate the kind of relationship that we had with our fathers and therefore the relationship that we have with males or masculinity or male figures, you know, or even authority because you know like the whole men of the house blah 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 you know that kind of thing so she has her son square mars and also her son squaring saturn and also her son opposing uranus now let's start with the sun squaring mars right so our mars signs our mars signs indicate the kind of energy that we have you know and our willpower to do things so her mars is in scorpio and scorpio is home in mars right so how Scorpio Mars people exude their energy is through like a tunnel vision, persistent obsession to achieve whatever goal that they have, you know, and being emotionally connected to that goal because Scorpio is a water sign and whatever um, planet you have water in, you're going to be emotionally attached to that. So she, whenever she has a goal, she would be emotionally attached to that and seeing it through. And then your sun sign will indicate the kind of vitality that the kind of vitality that you have. So the way in which you do things, you know, are you passionate when you do things? How passionate are you? How much energy do you how much energy do you have when you do specific things, you know? So as we all know, both Leo and Scorpio are very um, big personalities. They're very headstrong and they're very persistent and they um, are extreme in their nature, you know? So with people, especially women who have um, their sun squaring Mars, and also mind you, um, you know, her Mars is in a water sign, Scorpio is a water sign, Leo is a fire sign, you know, so these are very emotionally expressive people. So on the good end with this aspect, you know, she, she's very headstrong and she knows exactly what she wants out of life, you know what I'm saying? And she knows exactly what she wants to do. Like she has, she has a plan for everything and she knows how to get what she wants and also these are people who don't like taking no for an answer and they're going to be very persuasive and also because she has a mars and scorpio and she has a cancer moon you know what i'm saying she knows how to emotionally like drive people into doing specific things or being coercive in a way that she's gonna persuade you to do something especially if you're not like headstrong a lot of the times like if you if she encounters people with libra or pisces placement maybe not pisces but libra you know like virgo taurus aspects even pisces sometimes you know she knows how to coerce them or persuade them into doing specific specific things but the problem comes with when people aren't when she deems people as not like smart enough to pick up on things or smart enough to do things that's when she becomes more abrasive and aggressive and she kind of becomes forceful into people doing things the way that she wants them to do now with relationship with men this can be kind of trivial because um she demands somebody oh a man you know yeah well she would demand a man who you know is as headstrong as she is you know demanding a man who is like as assertive and as like domineering as she is because she wouldn't do out like i said with the pearl susie video she wouldn't do out with more soft passive people because she's gonna walk all over them but also with that she would have tribal relationships because like a lot of the times if somebody is very aggressive and they always want to take the lead they 
they naturally just encounter power struggles within their relationships with people and this is also a lot more hectic because she has her venus squaring pluto and women or just people who have venus square pluto have a difficult like relationships or difficult time like with intimate relationships or long-term intimate relationships venus square pluto people are very paranoid in love matters you know or once they get into like intimate issues because it's always like a a fear of a being abandoned a fear of being used a fear of being um isolated and just a fear of being cheated on so with that comes the negative aspect where somebody becomes extremely paranoid and that paranoia pushes their partner or pushes whoever that they're with to do effed up shit because that person the person with the venus square pluto is already assuming that you're already doing this so it's like i think you know that that keisha call i should have cheated as much as you accuse me of lying i should have done it so the people that are in a relationship with venus square pluto people like they they always feel like they're backed into a corner you know so venus square pluto people like they usually just kind of assume the worst in relationships especially when the relationship isn't going the way that they idealized it to go so sometimes these will be the people that because they're so obsessive and because they're so paranoid about their partners cheating on them sometimes they do attract partners who will cheat on them because they already pre-assume that that's going to happen you know what i'm saying so it's like they manifest what they what they already imagined to happen and then it actually happens and then they prove themselves right but these people have a great capacity to love you know and their love is like they will die for you they will walk on fire a hot rock fire for you you know but the other side is that they become they become extremely demanding and they demand you to be and act the way that they have idealized and they become extremely obsessive in the way that their relationship should go so that when it when it doesn't go that way then they assume the worst and virgo is already in detriment in venus you know so for her she just needs to learn to chill in relationships and just let people operate on their own timing without her forcing the timing to happen when she thinks it should happen you know and then with her mars case so she has mars squaring uranus also these are the these are really impulsive people like chris i think christian rock has this so these are like a very like boyish tomboyish women you know so she would definitely she's definitely a tomboy you know but like the tomboyishness comes in her impulsiveness like people with mars square uranus are extremely impulsive and it's like sometimes because mars is also a malefic planet and it's an energy planet and uranus is like that electrical of sudden things happening so they have sudden outbursts of anger sudden outbursts of like impulsiveness you know wanting to do things extremely suddenly so these people are really prone to like waking up with random bruises or prone to just waking up or just like prone to doing really impulsive things like out of nowhere you know start an argument out of nowhere just do something really weird out of nowhere and then her son opposing uranus right this makes her an, a super individualistic person these are people who are extreme rebellious people in fact all leo's bo born with you know within like 1997 to about 2000 something while uranus was still in aquarius all leo's born during this time are extremely rebellious you know and having your son opposing uranus because uranus is like the sign of the unique individual these these people like are re rebels you know they don't like being told what to do and also because she has her son squaring saturn and saturn is the planet of authoritative figures it just becomes having like it's like a difficult relationship with people of authority you don't like being told what to do you know you don't like being persuaded you don't like other people making decisions for you you know what i'm saying so these are the type of people that if you tell them not to do something they want to do it because now they want to prove to you what an individual they are but it's just a thing of they don't want their individuality to be threatened you know because they they know their individual and they can think for themselves you know so it's like a thing of don't question that you know what i'm saying so basically people with their son opposing uranus just want full autonomy over their lives and they struggle with really being told what to do or being persuaded into act a specific way but in relationships that can be really like you know detrimental because um, as soon as people present how they want to be treated she can kind of first go through rebellion and then like filter into okay maybe i should just like treat people how they want to be treated you know but it isn't all bad because she has her moon in cancer shining her mars in scorpio so she is fiercely loyal and she will protect anybody that she loves and she will go to the ends of the world to provide and to protect for the people that she loves and also she has her north node in can i mean in in leo in the sixth house tr conjuncting her son in leo so she's already working and acting in her life's destiny leo's all about being center stage being creative and she's already doing that she's working on her creativity as a way to bring stability in her life 
But the only thing is she should also, you know, be health conscious because that's in the six hours.